I seek but what belongs to me in truth. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. And joy and peace are my inheritance. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. Well, hello. Thank you so much for joining me in studying Lesson 104 in A Course in Miracles published by Foundation for Inner Peace here on Saturday, April the 13th of 2024. It's about three days earlier than that for me, but um, this is the lesson we're doing. I try to do them a little early so they get uploaded by the time that uh, the day comes around so that you can do your lesson on time. Anyway, um, if, I, if I'm of any help to you, which I hope that I make this a little easier to get through, the, through a, a, um, a, a book that's been very, very difficult for many people to get through. I try to make it easy for you to get through it. <laughs> and then I find, if you're like me, that one time through wasn't enough. I didn't do my lessons the way that he said to do them. So I did it again. And then I did it again. Each time I get a little better at doing the boy, he says those five minutes every hour, those are, those are challenging. And he doesn't expect you to do five minutes every hour all the time. He knows there's other things. You can't take five minutes and sit down. But when you can, and you can always at least bring the idea to your mind every hour, today being, I seek but what belongs to me in truth. And joy and peace are my inheritance. Or I seek but what belongs to me in truth. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. So let's look at the lesson. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. Today's idea continues with the thought that joy and peace are not but idle dreams. They are your right because of what you are. They come to you from God who cannot fail to give you what he wills. Yet must there be a place made ready to receive his gifts. They are not welcomed gladly by a mind that has instead received the gifts I made, or the gifts it made, where his belongs as substitutes for them. Again on that sentence. They are not welcomed gladly by a mind that has instead received the gifts it made, where his belong as substitutes for them. So if you've looked inside and you're, and you're trying to follow the guidance of, of the ego, then you're not going to receive the gifts of God. But if you look inside, and, you, and we're going to learn about that in our text reading here in a few moments. And if you look inside and you decide to follow the, 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 the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the whole world will, will, will demonstrate that that's what you've chosen. Paragraph 2. Today we would remove all meaningless and self-made gifts which you have placed upon the holy altar where God's gifts belong. His are the gifts that are our own in truth. His are the gifts that we inherited before time was and that will still be ours when time has passed into eternity. His are the gifts that are within us now for they are timeless and we need not wait to have them. They belong to us today. Therefore, we choose to have them now and know in choosing them in place of what we made, we but unite our will with what God wills and recognize the same as being one. Our longer practice periods today, the hourly five minutes given truth for your salvation, should begin with this. I seek but what belongs to me in truth and joy and peace are my inheritance. So those five minute pauses you're gonna take at, the, at every hour, you'll say this to begin that pause and then go into a quiet time and let the Holy Spirit guide your thoughts. I seek but what belongs to me in truth and joy and peace are my inheritance. 
Wow, that's your that's who you are naturally. That's your native state is joy and peace. If you're not experiencing that, it's because you're following the wrong inner guide. He says, so start, begin your practice periods by saying, I seek but what belongs to me in truth and joy and peace are my inheritance. Then lay aside the conflicts of the world that offer other gifts and other goals made of illusions witnessed to by them and sought for only in the world of dreams. All this we lay aside and seek instead that which is truly ours as we ask to recognize what God has given us. We clear a holy place within our minds before his altar where his gifts of peace and joy are welcome and to which we come to find what has been given us by him. We come in confidence today, aware that what belongs to us in truth is what he gives. And we would wish for nothing else, for nothing else belongs to us in truth. So do we clear the way for him today by simply recognizing that his will is done already and that joy and peace belong to us as his eternal gifts. We will not let ourselves lose sight of them between the times we come to seek for them where he has laid them. This reminder will we bring to mind as often as we can. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. Can we say that and mean it? God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. So he, he wants us to say that repeatedly throughout the day. You know, I'd aim for, you know, two, three, four times an hour. Try to remind yourself. Write it on a card if you need to, but tell yourself, I seek but what belongs to me in truth. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. <laughs> and then the more you say it, the more you'll be logging into that. Or, you know, whenever something comes up that you would habitually cuss <laughs> or been a little irritated, this time, because you're thinking your inheritance is joy and peace, you'll say, well, I think I'm going to ask for some guidance here because I think I, I'm not feeling like joy and peace right now. And then you'll find that way to look at it and laugh. I find so many things to laugh at, and it's usually things that are going on in my mind. Nothing to do with the outside world. It's the way I'm looking at it. <laughs> okay, uh, I seek but what belongs to me in truth. And joy and peace are my inheritance. Okay, let's go back and look at our text reading now. Uh, looking within is uh, Roman numeral 7 in chapter 12, the Holy Spirit's curriculum. And before we read that, let's take a look at uh, from holidays and observances around what are going on around the world. Baby massage day. Uh, you know, giving your uh, little child, grandchildren, uh, your own children, little, you know, little effleurage maybe, or just a gentle massage on their back. Uh, just so they love it. <laughs> and it's good for them. Uh, International Creativ Crea Creativity and Innovation Day. International FND Awareness Day, which is Functional Neurological Disorder. International Special Librarians Day. Uh, make lunch count. Uh, you know, I'd say make every meal count. You know, we, we're, we're, we want to aim for nutrient-rich foods, not for just empty calories. Make lunch count. National Catch and Release Day. National Peach Cobbler Day. Of course, your peaches aren't ripe, so I guess you'd have to use your canned pizzas, peaches, which would be fine because you'd be cooking them anyway. You're not looking for raw peaches in a peach cobbler generally. Even though when I make peach cobbler, I, what I like, I don't call it, I don't suppose to be peach cobbler, but just, you know, mixing some uh, uh, fresh peaches and honey, a little yogurt, maybe a piece of bread all mixed together. That's my peach cobbler. <laughs> Plant Appreciation Day. And of course, we're, we're all the time trying to appreciate plants, uh, looking for things that they can we, can we can use them for and how to grow them. 
That's the that's that's the world I see in the future is a, a, a and and it's also Thomas Jefferson Day, which he was one who saw a nation of gentlemen farmers. He called you know, the yeoman farmers that all had small holdings and produced a crop. They're what makes a nation strong, he said, because they all have an invested interest in the land. And together, they make a strong nation. When you use corporate agriculture to grow your food, you're less connected to the, the, your inher the land that you inherited, that you live upon. Uh, speaking of Thomas Jefferson, he was the third president he was born in Shadewell, Virginia on uh, this day in 1743 and died, believe it or not, on July 4th of 1826. Uh, Scrabble Day, a good game to play. Slow Art Day. Uh, let's see. And Velosky is a, a Sikh holy day in India. And it's the harvest festival for the for the for Sikhs, and it began in 1699. Uh, Sikh Holy Day in northern India. It's the Hindu solar year or the the new year, probably for the Sikhs too. Uh, but anyway, it's called Veloski or Boloski. Uh, Oh, no, I think I'm pronouncing that right. It, wrong. <laughs> Vesaki. Let's, let's go with that. Or Vesaki. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, and, you know, since we're, we're talking about the, the Punjab region and the Punjabi people speak, their word for peace is Shanti or Santi. Santi. Okay. Uh, and let's see. Edible landscaping. Let's take a quick look at what's going on. Uh, what food, what's our next, uh, it's the Great Wall Asian persimmon, a soft, these varieties are ripe only when the fruit becomes soft. So that's this Great Wall Asian persimmon, a uh, dyrospirus khaki, upright, round-headed tree with excellent red fall foliage, fruit is medium size, squarish and slightly flattened. Trees are very productive and hardy and long-lived. Fruit is of high quality, has good texture and flavor, ripe when soft, usually mid-autumn. Original tree from China, introduced by former plant introduction head and author of Tree Crops, J. Russell Smith, height 15 foot, space 12 foot circle, zone 6 through 8. And, and then in Permaculture for Beginners, by Carrie Mitchell, we're still in chapter six, water, the next infrastructure is mulching. Mulching of the soil or the garden uh, surface with wood chips, that's what I like to use, uh, or hay, straw, leaves, etc., is very beneficial to both preserve moisture in soil and prevent drying by air and sunlight. It also decomposes on the surface, releasing nutrients into the soil. Its moisture holding ability will allow the rains that fall to stay in the soil for much longer than on bare soil. So I, there's one, one man online that calls it um, uh, you're having your, your, your ground have armor on it. <laughs> Make sure it's, it's it got its armor on. Okay, I seek but what belongs to me in truth, and joy and peace are my inheritance. Looking within... Miracles demonstrate that learning has occurred under the right guidance, for learning is invisible, and what has been learned can be recognized only by its results. Its generalization is demonstrated as you use it in more and more situations. So as you keep seeing love in more and more places, you realize that it's always there to be seen. And the Holy Spirit, you can't necessarily see the Holy Spirit. Jesus talked about this back in the Bible. But you can feel the wind. So you know the wind's blowing. Well, the same way, the Holy Spirit. You, you know that there's a wind because you can feel it. Well, you might not be able to see the teaching of the Holy Spirit because it's invisible. But you can see the effects, which is your ability to see love. Its generalization is demonstrated as you use it more and more in more and more situations. 
you will recognize that you have learned there is no order of difficulty in miracles when you apply them to all situations. There is no situation to which miracles do not apply, and by applying them to all situations, you will gain the real world. <laughs> For in this holy perception you will be made whole, and the atonement will radiate from your acceptance of it for yourself to everyone the Holy Spirit sends you for your blessing. So we want to learn to bless everyone because there's no exceptions. Everyone's a miracle, and everyone deserves that miracle from you, and you deserve the miracle because that's your inheritance. Joy and peace are your inheritance. And today I seek but what belongs to me in truth. In every child of God, his blessing lies, and in your blessing of the children of God is his blessing to you. Paragraph 2. Everyone in the world must play his part in its redemption in order to recognize that the world has been redeemed. You cannot see the invisible, yet if you see its effects, you know it must be there. By perceiving what it does, you recognize its being. And by what it does, you learn what it is. You cannot see your strength, but you gain confidence in their existence. Okay, let's back up. You cannot see your strengths, but you gain confidence in their existence as they enable you to act. And the results of your actions you can see. <laughs> so you start seeing that, wow, there isn't any limit on miracle giving. Because everyone, I can, I can see a new perception as I practice forgiveness. And I can see that what I thought was going to make me upset and irritated can make me extremely joyful, peaceful and joyful. The Holy Spirit is invisible, but you can see the results of his presence. And through them, you will learn that he is there. What he enables you to do is clearly not of this world. For miracles violate every law of reality as this world judges it. Every law of time and space, of magnitude and mass, is transcended. For what the Holy Spirit enables you to do is clearly beyond all of them. Perceiving his results, you will understand where he must be and finally know what he is. Four. You cannot see the Holy Spirit, but you can see his manifestations. And unless you do, you will not realize he is there. Miracles are his witnesses and speak for his presence. What you cannot see becomes real to you only through the witnesses that speak for it. For you can be aware of what you cannot see, and it can become compellingly real to you as its presence becomes manifest through you. Do the Holy Spirit's work, for you share in his function. Do the Holy Spirit's work, for you share in his function. Basically, the way I, I see that is follow God's leading, leading, his guidance, and always be looking for joy and peace. Don't settle for anything less than joy and peace in every circumstance. See the beauty. See the beauty always. Do the Holy Spirit's work for you share in his function. As you function in heaven, excuse me, as your function in heaven is creation, so your function on earth is healing. God shares his function with you in heaven, and the Holy Spirit shares his with you on earth. As long as you believe you have other functions, so long will you need correction. For this belief is the destruction of peace, a goal in direct opposition to the Holy Spirit's purpose. Paragraph 5. You see what you expect. Okay, catch this. We're going to go deep now about the inner guidance. You see what you expect, and you expect what you invite. Your perception is the result of your invitation, coming to you as you sent for it. Whose manifestations would you see? Of whose presence would you be convinced? For you will believe in what you manifest. And as you look out, so will you see in. Two ways of looking at the world are in your mind. And your perception will reflect the guidance you have chosen. 
You can see a world of sin and guilt and be painful and not have your inheritance. Or you can see a world where joy and peace are all you see. And that you can exchange your erroneous perception for the real world, joy and peace. Where healing is used in this world, where creation is used in the world beyond time and space. I am the manifest, paragraph six, I am the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And when you see me, it will be because you have invited him, says Jesus. For he will send you his witnesses if you will but look upon them. Remember always that you see what you seek. For what you seek, you will find. The ego finds what it seeks and only that. It does not find love, for that is not what it is seeking. Yet seeking and finding are the same. And if you seek for two goals, you will find them, but you will recognize neither. You will think they are the same because you want both of them. The mind always strives for integration. And if it is split and wants to keep the split, it will still believe it has one goal by making it seem to be one. Paragraph 7. I said before that what you project or extend is up to you, but you must do one or the other, for that is the law of mind. And you must look in before you look out. Okay, we've got to look in before we look out. As you look in, you choose the guide for seeing. And this happens so instantaneous that it's not, it, it, you, 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 you look within and, and it, you, you, know, you, 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 you think about inside yourself. <laughs> uh, how do I want to see the world? Do you want to see the world that you're, you're threatened? and that you're vulnerable, well, you'll see that world then. If you look in your world and you say, I want to see my invulnerability where I, where I ex exude God, where I, I send forth love, I extend love, and I'm invulnerable, and joy and peace is all there is to see, well, then you'll see that world. That's the miracle. As you look in, you choose the guide for seeing. And when you look out and behold his witnesses, and then you look out and behold his witnesses. Let's read that again. I said before that what you project or extend is up to you, but you must do one or the other, for that is the law of mind, and you must look in before you look out. As you look in, you choose the guide for seeing, and then you look out and behold his witnesses. This is why you find what you seek. What you want in yourself, you will make manifest. And you will accept it from the world because you put it there by wanting it. You put it there by wanting it. That's the looking within, what you want. When you think you are projecting what you do not want, it is still because you do want it. This leads directly to dissociation for it represents the acceptance of two goals, each perceived in a different place, separated from each other because you made them different. The mind then sees a divided world outside itself, but not within. This gives it an illusion of integrity and enables it to believe that it is pursuing one goal. Yet as long as you perceive the world as split, you are not healed. For to be healed is to pursue one goal, because you have accepted only one and want but one. And today we want to seek but what belongs to me in truth. We want to say that to ourselves often. And joy and peace are all I want. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. For to be healed is to pursue one goal because you have accepted only one and want but one. In the last paragraph we'll read today, when you want only love, you will see nothing else. When you want only love, we will see nothing else. The contradictory nature of the witnesses you perceive is merely the reflection of your conflicting invitations, what you've done looking inside yourself. You have looked upon your mind and accepted opposition there, having sought it there, but do not then believe that the witnesses for opp opposition are true, for they attest only to your decision about reality, returning to you the messages you gave them. 
Love too is recognized by its messengers. If you make love manifest, its messengers will come to you because you invited them. <laughs> Let's be inviting the gifts of God to come to us today. Okay, well, I think we know what to do. We've talked a little bit about it. God, uh, I seek but what belongs to me in truth. Tell yourself that often throughout the day. At the top of every hour, try to take five minutes or at least pause and say, I seek but what belongs to me in truth. And joy and peace are my inheritance. Then lay aside the conflicts of the world that offer other gifts and other goals made of illusions, witnessed to by them and sought for only in a world of dreams. Lay all that aside and seek instead that which is truly ours as we ask to recognize what God has given us. Okay, so let's do that today. And I seek but what belongs to me in truth. And joy and peace are my inheritance. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. And joy and peace are my inheritance. And joy and peace are my inheritance. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. I to me in truth I seek but what belongs to me in truth I seek but what belongs to me in truth and joy and peace are my inheritance I to me in truth God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want I seek but what belongs to me in truth I seek but what belongs to me in truth I seek but what belongs to me in truth. Let's, let's go inside and determine that that's what we want to see outside so that the whole world reflects what we've been asking for. Ask and you shall find. Let's ask for God's inheritance, the gifts that he's given us of joy and peace. I seek but what belongs to me in truth and joy and peace are my inheritance. I seek but what belongs to me in truth. God's gifts of joy and peace are all I want. Santi. <laughs>